Hey, it's Bob with Cascadia Classic and we're going to take a look at hood ornaments on some of the cars that I've sold over the years. Hood ornaments began in the age when automobiles had external radiator caps and even though those caps eventually moved underneath the hood, automakers still kept that design detail on the front of their cars. Gonna start with this 1935 Buick. This happens to be a very rare model 56 business coupe and only 257 of them were built. This one was an incredible survivor. Buick chose a beautiful woman to lead the way on this car, and they weren't alone with that choice. Cadillac was perhaps best known for using this goddess design starting in 1930 on their V16 models. This is a 1941 Series 62, and the hood ornament on this car is actually part of the hood release mechanism. The Goddess for 1941 is one of their most ornate versions, as the previous years appeared more streamlined. By 1949, the Goddess went back to being streamlined. A newly designed V8 debuted that year, and Cadillac's design team wanted a hood ornament that looked like speed. Gone was the old flathead, replaced by a newly designed overhead valve motor. It was engineered by Charles Kettering, and the Cadillac and Oldsmobile brands got first crack at it in 1949. People literally crowded into the showrooms just to get a look at these new engines. Cadillac's goddess continued until 1957, getting more streamlined as the years went by, even if the cars themselves looked like they were adding a few pounds. Oldsmobile used a rocket design for their hood ornaments in the early 50s, which tied into the marketing campaign for their new V8 motor that I had mentioned earlier. It was originally going to be marketed as Kettering Power, but GM had a policy against naming engines after persons, so the phrase rocket power was used instead. This is a 1950 Oldsmobile Club Coupe, and you'll notice that the hood has plexiglass windows to show off the motor. These hoods were supplied to select GM dealers to save their salesmen from having to open the hoods multiple times a day. Everyone wanted to see these new motors, and this was the solution. This car was restored by 50 Olds guru Eddie Rezac, and you can see why these Oldsmobiles are often referred to as America's first muscle car. Now, Pontiac had some great hood ornaments from the start, but getting Chief Pontiac up to speed in the jet age met with some mixed results on this 1954 Chieftain. Even in 1950, you can see some small wings have been added, but go back to 1946 and it all works. This stunning ornament is from an equally stunning model called the Streamliner. These are super hard to find and one of those cars that I really should have kept. Here's a look at the Chief in 1940 on a Deluxe 8 convertible. And this one is from a 1935 Business Coupe, another one that was rare when new, and there's probably only a handful of them left today. This particular car was filmed in multiple episodes of the Amazon series, The Man in the High Castle. And on this nice old Pontiac relic, we've got to go back all the way to 1927 to catch a glimpse of what possibly, maybe, could be what Chief Pontiac might have actually looked like. Now here's a rare one from one of the great independents, Hudson, and this 1936 model was called the Terraplane. Hudsons were assembled under license in factories around the world, and the Terraplane was actually a very popular car at the time in the UK. And although I love them, these cars had some awkward design proportions, so it's not entirely surprising that their hood ornament would resemble a flying hot dog. But wouldn't it be great if a car company today came out with a flying hot dog hood ornament? Maybe even just as a token apology to the consumer for the wind tunnel, efficiency design, plastic blob appliance vehicles that have been force fed on us for the past few decades. Just a thought. Some would say that the hood ornament decline started in the 1960s with small emblems that didn't really offer much in the way of inspiration. However, the 1964 Buick Riviera did have a lot of other good things going for it. But by the 1970s, hood ornaments began to look the same. Buick punted and simply used their TriShield logo. For Cadillac, it was their familiar Crest logo, the coat of arms from the French adventurer that founded Detroit, which Cadillac actually had been using on their cars since 1905. 
It's known as the symbol of excellence, and it's hard to argue with that. Cadillac did make some pretty special cars, and this symbol can be found somewhere on each and every one of them. But that's a video for another day. Thanks for watching.